Hi guys, thank you everyone for coming and viewing our DMLC presentation. We're so excited to um, just present and show you guys what we have. Um, I'm Sarah Wilcox. I'm the current president of Dance Marathon at LSU. Um, I started out as a campaign director uh, and last year I had the pleasure of being VP of public relations, which is now marketing. Um, and I'm a mass communication major with a digital advertising concentration. So. Hi, I'm Sarah Benoit. Um, I've been in DM for three years. I started as a marketing committee member and last year I was the marketing director and I'm currently the um, community outreach director and I am studying mass communication with a concentration in public relations. Hi guys, my name is Delaney Mobley. I've been in Dance Marathon for two years or six years if you count my mini. Um, last year I was the lead executive director and this year I am the vice president of marketing. Um, I am a mass communications major with a concentration in political communications on the pre-law track. Awesome. So um, today we're gonna talk about how to use social media and public relations to benefit your organization and we'll break down the logistics behind planning your content. Um, so we'll cover finding the purpose behind your content, planning your monthly calendar and event calendar, and we'll also share how to engage your community through relationships with the press. Um, we know that every program is at a different place with their social media skills and their goals, so we tried to make these tips scalable for teams of all sizes. This past year, our structure included a vice president of marketing who led a team of four directors, each with their own respective team of committee members. This included a public relations design, merchandise, and multimedia team. This structure worked really well with a full team and dedicated committee members, and we were able to get a wide range of coverage at all of our events, and we often collaborated with each other for all of our projects. We also had a, enough fit division when it was necessary. The great thing about this structure is that it's super adjustable. So smaller teams can adjust to just having a public relations and a creative director and have a broader list of responsibilities. It's important to remember exactly why you're posting in general. So I'm going to break down the three purposes we usually aim for our content to hit, um, just so we're really being intentional with what we're posting. So your participant base is young and they always will be. So social media can definitely be one of your prime areas for educating and cause connecting. Um, your social media should also be a place to invite people in, which may mean cutting back on some DM jargon to make things accessible to everyone. Um, allowing your socials to grow your community is a big part to this, uh, which can be done by giving participants a voice through interactive posts. There's usually three main elements that we focus our actual content around. So the first is education, ensuring that our participants are in the know and our socials are contributing to that. Um, and the second is fundraising. Our participants are on social media more than any other method of communication. So this is prime real estate for fundraising content. Um, and lastly is recruitment. We wanna make sure we're allowing socials to actually foster growth and get our message to participants. So now that um, you know what goes into the thought behind the strategy, let's dive into the actual planning and logistics behind that. Um, we usually plan our content at least a month in advance. Of course, you're always gonna have changes no matter what, um, but it definitely helps to have a plan and ensure your team has the bandwidth to cover the month's content. So we try to be very particular about what kind of posts we're using for our content to ensure it's the best delivery. Um, feed posts are best for long form content because it takes longer to consume and engage with, but it lasts long enough for your participants to go back to it. Um, videos are also best for long form content because it takes a longer time to consume and videos do get better engagement than a normal post, but it's still important to consider your options timing wise. Reels are also a great alternative to traditional videos for shorter form content because it takes a low effort for participants to engage with, and it usually has higher engagement in comparison anyway. 
Um, and Instagram stories are great for short form content because it generally doesn't last that long unless you're adding it to a highlight. Um, and it requires a lower effort to absorb the info and engage with it from your participants. So Google Calendar is what we use to plan out our day-to-day -day posting schedule. Planning a month in advance helps us stay on top of our deadlines. It sends us reminders about scheduled posts in advance so we never miss anything also. Everyone on our marketing team is able to join the posting schedule calendar to see what we have coming up and what they should be working on. We can also easily identify what kind of posts we're doing on each day, like Instagram stories, reels, feed posts, we prefer to use Google Calendar over Excel for normal posts throughout the year because it tends to be more user friendly and helpful with reminders. When we're ahead, we usually use a scheduling assistant like Planoly to actually schedule out our posts. For big event and push days, sometimes Excel is our friend because of the increased amount of content and attention to detail that's needed. For our big event, we made this Excel sheet to organize all of the posts we made across Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook for the day of our big event. That's a huge day for us, so it was broken down by the minute, but you can easily modify this to fit the needs of any push or event calendar. Each social media column is separated into, in, into three columns, the description of the post, the status of the post, and the name of who's working on it. The status column has a drop down menu that allows you to select what stage that post is at and being completed. We also wanted to be able to visibly track our progress throughout the push or event because we all know how busy and chaotic those days can get. So each pull down option is color coordinated to help you monitor progress easily at a glance. We made a conscious effort to be more intentional, intentional about what we're posting so we can avoid ad clutter in our feed and our stories. You'll see here one of the Sarah's Instagram highlights, which is a perfect example of what a cluttered story can look like. It's okay. She knows she has an issue. But what's important here is that posting non-impactful story posts can not only take away from engaging your audience, but also keeping them. Overall, it really just causes you to lose traction on the posts that do matter. This completely hinders your audience's ability to differentiate between what they need to focus on and what the clutter is. A great place to start cultivating relationships with participants is by interacting with them through social media. Being an active name will not only draw them to your posts, but also their friends. Engaging with our participants is something that we do all the time. We started liking their daily content and commenting on their posts about birthdays or their latest accomplishments. This allows your org's name to be more present in the participants' lives. It's also just a really fun way to make the participant experience more personal, which is always the goal. Now that you know the purpose and the plan behind everything, let's talk about how you can use public relations to engage your community. Working with the press is a great way to not only gain exposure for your org, but also to get your name out in the community. When the community knows more about who you are, they're going to be more willing to support your cause. This increase in brand awareness will help more people recognize who you are and know how to help you. This can be a super simple increase for your org's donations and engagement. So starting a relationship with press can be daunting, especially when you don't have experience with journalists, um, but we're gonna try and break down the process into some simple steps. So just like we discussed with the three different types of content, um, it's important to determine what kind of ask you're gonna bring to the press whenever you write a piece for them. Um, is your goal to bring more awareness to the organization? Is it to help your organization fundraise? Or is it just to foster more engagement with the community in general? Um, once you decide what that ask is, it will be a lot easier to start figuring out what kind of press you want. So for instance, an interview on a morning show might be better to help you fundraise while an article for an editorial might be a better ask for engagement at one of your events, like say a 5K. Um, we did research on local media in our area and you'll see this contact list here. Um, and we definitely recommend keeping a, keep a detailed sheet of who you're contacting, just like this one. Um, and also tracking how many times you've reached out, stuff like that, um, just to ensure you're not double dipping or missing people that you thought you contacted. Um, the follow-ups are extremely important because usually one email doesn't catch their attention right off the bat. 
this press release template um, that we have right here is, was actually given to me by one of my professors. And I find myself looking back to it a lot when reaching out to media. The most important things to remember when writing a press release is to make sure your first paragraph, if not your first sentence, answers the questions of who, what, when, where, why, and how. The most important information regarding your event is what needs to be first. Next is that the information you include should not exceed one page. Journalists are more likely to read a press release that includes just the important information about the event. There's no need for the extra fluff. Also, always end your press release with a link to where they can find more information about the event and where they can donate. The last thing to keep in mind are boilerplates. They're often overlooked, but are very important. This is where you give more information on what your organization does in the history. That way you don't have to waste space in the press release explaining that and you can focus on the important information on the event coming up. I also wanted to mention pitch emails. Um, we included an example of a pitch email we used this past year. The art of pitch emails is to have an eye-catching subject line to stand out in a reporter's inbox and to keep it short and sweet. Personalizing them to each reporter helps a lot and you can foster a relationship with them in that way. Using a template pitch email also works as long as you make sure they know who you are, what you want from them and direct them to your attached press release for more information. If you wanna start working with your local media and press, these are the, the, the different timelines of different media channels. Um, most of them need information on your event at least four weeks in advance, sometimes six weeks, to make sure their deadlines are being met. They're all planning out their content just like us, but on a higher scale. They need time to send their content to print and make sure their, sh their shows are lined up to air correctly. Start by contacting your local news stations before or after you hold an event, depending on what your goals are for that event. Local magazines are really interested in getting news out about what's going on in the community and contacting them before an event is likely to increase your engagement and theirs. And that helps to begin the relationship between you and the surrounding community. Morning show interviews before or after an event takes place allows for you to build a relationship with the hosts and with the, their audience. Last year, we began our relationship by doing a morning show interview with Fox 44 News, which was our first ever morning show appearance, and we were able to give a text to register code on air for donations during prime time. Also, student-led media platforms lean towards producing student-relevant media and want to offer them new and exciting things to do, and that event that you're hosting could be just that. We had our broadcast and magazine programs attend our event and interview students and Miracle families last year, which is a great avenue for building community on campus. We also sat down with one of our local podcasts named What's What BR, where we got to talk to an older Baton Rouge audience. Working with your community calendars helps for there to be a physical copy of all of your event dates in local family neighborhoods so that they can look back on it whenever they need. Local associations can be any association that has a cause that is related to your purpose. So anytime you're sending out a piece to the press, you should consider a relevant organizations to send your press release to as well. So the most important thing that we can stress is to ensure you continue maintaining these relationships after you start that relationship with the press. Um, so even after that interview. Um, so we've de developed substantial relationships as Delaney mentioned, a couple of the ones we've started this past year with some of our press contacts, just by keeping in touch and stewarding them just as we would a normal partner. Um, we've had to le this lead to actual media partnerships, for example, um, with iHeartRadio, who agreed to give us allocated radio time to advertise for our big event uh, two years ago. And we also developed a great relationship with BR Parent Magazine, who helped us get in contact with the local podcast that Delaney mentioned. And with them, we were able to to secure an opportunity for future mini marathons in our local area because the podcast works so closely with the school district. Um, so there's so much opportunity with working with media and the press only wanna help amplify your cause's stories. So we highly encourage using both your social media and public relations um, efforts in order to help propel you forward in the local community this year. So we just wanted to thank you all for coming and just listening to our presentation. Um, it's such a privilege to be able to share this kind of information and learn from you guys as well as we continue our journey with Dance Marathon. Um, but thank you. We really appreciate it.